The NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series race concludes from Kansas Speedway, and we see a lot of chaos, a couple big wrecks, and Grant Enfinger picking up his first picture of the 2023 Truck Series season. What's going on, guys? It's Daniel, and welcome back to our video. I just got done watching the NASCAR Truck Series race from Kansas Speedway, the Hard America 200. We got quite a bit to talk about from this race. Let's go ahead and talk about it. So, before the green flag drop in tonight's race, Ross Chastain, Wallace Allen, and Matt Crafton all have to go to the rear for unapproved adjustments. So, at the start of the race, yeah, Christian Eck is lead the field from the inside with Kyle Busch on the outside, and we saw Christian Eck is able to clear and get the race lead. Then we basically eventually saw, I believe, Ben Rhodes pass Christian Eckes around seven laps in the race. A really good battle for the lead up from Kyle Busch, Christian Eckes, and um, Ben Rhodes. Ben Rhodes, though, got around lap seven, and he took the race lead. Ben Rhodes started pulling away, but Christian Eckes was close right behind. And then the first caution came out on lap 21 for Nick Weitz, who just got loose coming off of turn number two with a pretty good save. Got a little bit of damage, but lucky for him, not a ton of damage, and he's able to continue on. So we saw a little bit of strategy where guys like Zane Smith, Chase, Purdy, Christian Eckes, Ty Majeski, Jake Garcia all decided to stay out while everyone else came down pit road. Unfortunately, you know, Dive was having a decent run. He unfortunately got penalized for an uncontrolled tire. So on the next restart, Zane Smith lead the field from the inside with Chase Purdy on the outside. And Kyle Busch got a really, really strong restart and was up to second position after getting up from a position on the restart. As they're coming to white flag at stage one, he had Zane Smith leading the field. Kyle Busch made a very, very strong move and got up to the lead going into turn number one and passed Zane Smith. And they came off the final quarter with some great racing behind. Kyle Busch would hold off the field and win stage number one. All the cars that did not come down pit road before the end of stage one, they would all come down pit road, basically handing the race lead to Kyle Busch. Unfortunately, Corey Ham had a barely bad pit stop, lost a ton of time, and also Tony Breidinger got a penalty for speeding on pit road. So then on the next race, sorry, Kyle Busch lead the field from the inside with Grant and Finger on the outside, and Kyle Busch was able to clear for the race lead. Meanwhile, we saw a lot of chaos starting to happen, a lot of guys moving around, making passes throughout the field. Kyle Busch had a lead, but I believe Grant Enfinger also got around Kyle Busch eventually for the race lead. And then 10 laps later on the run, we saw Chris Rice spin coming off a of turn number four and went through the grass, but luckily he was able to continue going. Unfortunately, though, the caution would come out. Because of this, a bunch of drivers had to stay out, being guys like Ty Majeski, Kyle Busch, Roger Cruz, Zane Smith, Ross Chastain all stayed out while the rest leaders came down pit road. And Carson Nosberg got a lot of ton of damage after contact with Haley Deegan early in the race. He stayed on pit road a little bit longer. So on the race, sorry, Ty Majeski lead the field from the outside with Kyle Busch on the inside. And Ty Majeski was able to clear for the race lead as Kyle Busch had a terrible restart. Then we saw Corey Heim get a really, really strong run drive up to second position and challenge Ty Majeski for the race lead. And then Corey Heim got break, passed right back by Ty Majeski. And Ty Majeski is able to hold off a hard charge of Grant Enfinger, and he would win Sage number two. Then after we had some damage, because Kyle Busch actually had damage to some contact with Ben Rose during Sage number two. There's a lot of contact and a ton of damage on their cars. They would come down per row for repairs. And then the rest leaders will all come down pit road, including Ty Majeski, Corey Heim, Roger Krub, Zane Smith, Christian Eggers, all came down pit road. And back did the field only while the rest of the field took four tires. So on the restart, Grant Anfinger lead the field from the inside with Tyler Ankrum on the outside, and Grant Anfinger was able to clear for the race lead with Roger Kruf jumping up to second. There's a really good battle happening between Roger Kruf and Ty Majeski for a few laps, and unfortunately, heads would collide. Coming out of freshest, Roger Kruf would put a little bit of a block on Ty Majeski, and then unfortunately, Ty Majeski got into uh, Roger Kruf after hooking him, got hooked, and bad through a block. We saw Ty Majeski get into Roger Kruf and unfortunately spin him out. In my opinion, it's just a racing deal. Unfortunately, put some blame on Roger. Yes, Ty Majeski got into Roger, but to be fair to, to Ty, Roger was blocking quite a bit there, and that kind of put him in a position where that ended up happening. It's a tough break because Roger was having a career night and was probably going to have a shot to win the race and compete against Grant because his truck was really, really good. But it is what it is, and it's an unfortunate situation. Because of that, we saw a little bit of strategy where guys like Chase Purdy, Matt Craft, and Kyle Busch all came down the road and took feel because they were in a field window. So then on the next race, there, Grant and Finger lead the field from the inside, and Nick Sanchez on the outside. Grant got a really strong restart as they're going to turn number one. Trouble with strike for some contact between Matt Benedetto and Christian Neckes, where Matty D put on a block on Christian Neckes, and a bunch of trucks got collided involved. 
This including Dean Thompson, Carson Nosmar, Christian Eckes, and Chase Purdy all end up getting involved in the wreck. In my opinion, looking at the incident, Matty D probably should not put that block. Yes, Christian is definitely a little bit aggressive, but in my opinion, Matty D put on a really, really bad block on the race. There's a long way to go in the race. You don't need to be that aggressive, especially when you're having a really strong run. This unfortunate mistake right there by Matt Benedetto. And we saw Chase Purdy basically arc a break into the door of, I believe, Christian Eckes, but not mistaken. And the situation has took out a ton of drivers, which is just a really big shame. So then on the next restart, you have Grant Anfinger lead the field from the inside, and Nick Sanchez on the outside, and Grant Anfinger was able to clear for the lead. But Sir Friesen got a really, really strong run. He's actually able to take the race lead back from Grant Anfinger. And then the final caution race to come on lap 92 for Chris Wright, who got into the wall in turn number two from 20th position, and for it to crash out of the race, bring out the caution. Let's got loose going into turn number one, hit the outside wall really, really hard. So then we saw a little bit of strategy for guys like Tanner Gray and Tyler Hill decided to stay out while the rest leaders came down pit road. And on the restart, Ta Tanner Gray lead the field from the inside with Zane Smith who won the race off pit road on the outside. And Zane Smith got a really, really strong restart, is able to take the race lead. But as they're going to turn number three, Corey Heim sends it to the bottom and passes Zane Smith for the race lead. And while you got Corey Heim having the race lead, Zane Smith was a little bit faster. They're bound really, really hard with around 30 laps to go. Grant Infinger gets up there. Both Corey Heim and Zane Smith get a little bit loose. They battle for the lead. They open the door right open, and Grant Infinger is able to pass both Zane Smith and Corey Heim for the race lead. And Grant Infinger is able to start pulling away. Corey Heim tries to make a move early in that when they were battling, but unfortunately never got a chance to get back around of him and started losing time, and Grant Infinger started pulling away. There was a potential for caution would come out with 10 to go for Ty Majeski. You saw on the apron of right front flat. Fortunately, though, for Grant Anfinger, the caution would not come out for that. Grant Anfinger pulled out to about a three or four second lead. And while Corey Heim was faster at times, it would not be enough for him. And it came off the final corner. Grant Anfinger would come off the corner and pick up his first victory of the 2023 NASCAR Truck Series season. His first win since Indianapolis Raceway Park in pretty dominating fashion. Grant Anfinger, in my opinion, had the best truck. His truck was really strong all night. Yes, he lost the lead at times, but I think that 23 truck was the strongest it had been basically all season. It's been an up and down year for Grant Anfinger, so to see him finally get his first win of the 2023 season is definitely really, really good to see. I'm happy to see him get that first victory in 2023, and maybe we're going to see more victories from Grant Anfinger <coughs> this year. They've, it seems like Chevy and I just set up a really strong truck. And great night for Grant Anfinger. Congratulations to him and GMS. There's a lot of uncertainty around the future of the team, especially with Legacy Motor Club switching over to Toyota next year. There's a lot of uncertainty if this team is going to say a Chevy team or a Toyota team. We're not sure. So great to see them of all the uncertainty for him to get his first victory. Congratulations to him on the win. So now we're going to take a look at race results, and I'll give you my score of tonight's race. So Grant Anfinger picks up the victory in tonight's race. Corey Hyde finished his second great run for Corey Hyde tonight. He had one of the best trucks for sure in the field. I think he wasn't as good as a 23 of Grant Anfinger, but still another great night, after, especially after winning Martinsville a couple weeks ago. A great second-place finish. Fantastic run for him. Zane Smith finished third. Zane Smith had a top-five truck most of the night, not the race-winning truck they did last year at Kansas, but still a very good night for Zane Smith. Finished third. Very good top-five for him. Stuart Friesen finished his fourth. He had a crew change over the year. He lost Blake Banger to work with Daniel Dye this weekend. Very solid run for Stuart Friesen. Ran top 10 a lot of nights. Struggled early, but bounced back to get a very solid top five finish. Best run he's had all year for sure. Great run for Stuart Friesen. Ross Chastain finished his fifth. I thought Ross was going to be a little more of a threat tonight than he was. It's still a very solid top five finish. And he's had some good pace and speed, but not a race winning track for Ross, but still a very solid top five for Ross Chastain. Nick Sanchez finishes sixth. Great run for Nick Sanchez. Nick never had a race-winning truck, but still a very solid night for Nick Sanchez in sixth place. Kyle Busch finished seventh. Kyle Busch, uncharacteristically, was off. He was not a truck that could win. Got some damage early in the race. Bounced back a little bit to finish seventh. But I think a lot of people like myself thought that this was going to be a no-brainer that Kyle Busch was going to get the victory. And he did not get the victory tonight. He still gets a top ten, but just a disappointing night for Kyle Busch. Just a terrible truck, did not bring the right setup, and struggled all night long. Jake Garcia finished his eighth. This kid has been impressing me all year, and he's been finishing consistently top five and top ten all season. I think he made the playoffs in 2023. A great run for Jake Garcia. Taylor Gray finished his ninth. Had a pretty busy day. Ran the ARCA race. Ended up finishing in third. So a very solid night for Taylor Gray. He's trying to make the playoffs. I think he's got a really good chance to make it this year. Great run for Taylor Gray. And Tyler Anker finished his tenth. Saw a run for Tyler Anker. Anker struggled early, but bounced back and gets a very solid top ten finish. 
Uh, Matt Crafton finishes 11th. Very solid run for Matt Crafton tonight. Not a race-winning truck, but still a decent run for Matt Crafton in 11th place. Haley Deegan finishes 12th. She had her best run, I think, of the season so far in 2023, consistency-wise. Sure, she did get a 6th place finish, of course, at Texas, but she got up there because of attrition. And attrition did help her a little bit tonight, but she was a lot of us tonight, was running in the top 7 to 8 in top 10. And she needs to be having a lot more of those runs going forward. And I feel like that, that is something I hope that she can continue doing going forward throughout the 2023 season, especially she's going to want to make the playoffs this year. Still a very solid night for her in 12th place, the top 15. She's been consistently finishing the top 15 and 20, top 20 a lot more this year. She had last year, so solid run for her. Daniel Dye finishes 13th. Daniel Dye thought was a little more of a threat than he was tonight because he was really strong in practice and qualifying. Still, top 15 is not that bad, all things considered. This is by far his best run he's had of his truck series skirt up to this point, so solid top 15 for him. Brad Holmes finishes 14th. Not a bad run for him. How about Tony Breidinger finishing 15th? Now, Tony Breidinger, she made a truck series debut tonight. She struggled all evening in that one truck, but they made that truck a little bit better. And for her to finish in the top 15, yes, she got helped by the attrition, but still a very solid run for Tony Breidinger in her debut. Top 15 is not bad, all things considered. Great run for her. Ben Rose finishes 16. Ben Rose got some damage off some contact from Kyle Busch. Still a very solid recovery for Ben Rose in 16th. Law Sound finishes 17th. Tanner Gray finishes 18th. Johnny Sauter, not a bad run for him. He finishes 19th. Brendan Poole finished 20th. Not a bad run for Brendan Poole with Glory to God Racing. Nick Lys with a decent recovery. He finishes 21st. Tyler Hill finishes 22nd. Justin Carroll finishes 23rd, making his truck debut tonight. Josh Ryun finishes 24th. Ty Majeski, who basically had a flat tire near the end of the race, had one of the best trucks early in the race after contact Roger Kruf. He finishes 25th. Spencer Boyd finishes 26th. Mason Maggio finishes 27th. 28th for Chris Rice. 29th place finish for Matt Benedetto after crashing out. Christian Neckes finishes 30th after the crash. Carson Osmar finishes 31st. Dean Thompson finishes 32nd. Chase Purdy finishes 33rd. Roger Kruf had one of the strongest trucks all night. Finishes 34th. Colby Howard finishes 35th. And Timothy Fiennes, who I don't even believe really made a lap at all tonight, finishes last in 36th place. So now let's talk about the overall race as a whole. I'll give you my score for tonight's race. Honestly, this race is pretty good in my opinion for the most part. There's a lot of great racing up front. You had a lot of side-by-side -side racing, a lot of great moves in Stage 1 and Stage 2. Sure, Stage 3 kind of ended up not being as good, but again, Stage 3 kind of ended up with a lot of the attrition. Drivers took care of each other and still had a pretty good battle near the end with around 30 laps to go. Yes, it got strung out near the end, but I still thought tonight's truck race at Kansas was pretty good. I'm going to give tonight's truck race at Kansas overall an 8 out of 10. Like I said, very solid race for sure. Some wrecks here in the end that kind of drew this race out a little bit too. But for me, one of the best truck races so far of the 2023 season. One of my favorites so far of the season. My score for tonight's truck series race is an 8 out of 10. So, that is going to be tonight's truck series race review from Kansas Speedway. I want to thank guys for watching. Please like, subscribe to the channel. Notifications on so you know if I win a video, does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and support me on Patreon as well. Let's go below with that and comment your thoughts below on today's race. What are your thoughts on tonight's race? Let me know below. Let me know your thoughts and score in the comments below. And congratulate Grant Enfinger for picking up his first win of 2023. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Tomorrow on my channel, we're the NASCAR Cup Series race review from Kansas Speedway. Then on Monday, we're going to have a NASCAR news being on the channel. we got some news to talk about over the last couple days. And we're also going to have Truck Series race picks on the channel as well for Darlington. And throughout the week, we're going to have Darlington throwback schemes dropping. A lot of content in a way that I think you're going to enjoy. So anyways, like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's episode. And I'll see you guys next time for more great, awesome NASCAR content and other motorsports content on the channel like this. Take care, everybody.